you doing, man? Yeah, with what they did, we got hell last night down at the school, man. Police are soaking wet and everything. So, Eddie came out there. He, he, he told us to shut down. We shut down about a quarter to eight. And they're going to play that game at 11. So, he told me after I finish up the church, go to the meeting. He said, if you need to, uh, come late. And he don't care. He said, just show up. Uh, he said, we can get you on. Good morning, Central United Methodist Church. It is 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. This is the place we love to be. So we have got a lot of announcements. If you are under, what, what, year, what age should I pick? If you are under 25, get a pencil ready, okay? Because I'm gonna ask a question in a minute and I wanna see who can answer it first, okay? So let's start through our bulletin this morning. You all know that late August is just loaded with announcements. So let's look here. At first, you'll see our prayer concerns. Then, 
I would like to invite you back to the South 40. Uh, this today is our last listening session before we engage with our consultants. And so if you would like to come back in the back today, uh, we will have a chance. Our, if you'll notice there, the master plan process is about to begin. You're invited to participate. So if you would like to give any input on how our facilities might need to be updated or how our programming might need to be enhanced or updated, come to the South 40. You'll get other chances for input, but today is the last uh, listening session before we talk to the consultants. So join Stan Anthony in the back there today. Also, Gina, if you'll see there, is getting ready to go on an incredible trip. We're all so jealous. And so the office hours will be a little bit different. Thank you to all of you who've agreed to come fill in for a little shift. It sure makes our lives easier, so thank you. But take note of those. Also, because Gina will be gone, the bulletin information is due early. We're all feeling the pinch of that, but if you have things you need to get out to folks, please take note of that. Also, on uh, August 25th, Luke Edwards, that we heard speak about fresh expressions, will be here. I think you will love hearing Luke that day, so plan to be here. The next little section is for our youth. The Central UMYF End of Summer Pool Party at the Benfields is coming up. And then the fall schedule begins with Sunday school, crossfire, and youth. So pay attention to those things right there. Then our ministry needs, if you can donate any of those. Well, let me tell you, okay, now those of you young that have your pins ready, okay, we got some kids back here ready with your pins. Okay, at open table, they had 18 cases of 144 hard-boiled eggs donated. Okay, so whenever some young person under 25 finds out how many hard-boiled eggs that is, shout it out to me, okay? So this was donated. Well, guess how many deviled eggs they made for open table? Anybody wanna guess? 300, okay? But once we hear the final number, you will know that there are a lot of deviled eggs left down, uh, not deviled, I'm sorry, hang on, the hard boiled eggs are left downstairs, they have not all been deviled, okay? You too can devil some eggs on your Sunday afternoon. Uh, okay, anybody got me a number? 18 times 144, come on, come on, I need to, do what? Yes, 2,592 hard-boiled eggs. That is right. Very good. Super. So please go down. You can get hard-boiled eggs. You can get bananas. You can get lettuce. So help yourself with the lettuce. And um, the bananas are in the pack. Please, please, please bring plastic bags. Okay? Discovery class is coming up. If you want to know more about uh, Central, about what it means to be a Methodist, what it means to be a Central United Methodist member, plan to join us for that. Wednesday nights are about to start back and we're gonna kick it off. Ever since I've been here, I've heard about the birthday uh, dinners and all that you all used to have. So we're having birthday light celebration, okay? So we're not going full-fledged this first time, but we are gonna have a fellowship to kick off our Wednesday nights. Um, if you'd like to take a month to have a centerpiece or make the dessert, let me know about that. Okay, I think I skipped Joy. Joy's coming. Watch for more details about that uh, on September the 9th, that Monday. Uh, Sunday school, we will be kicking off full-fledged, especially with our youth, right after Labor Day. So our youth are going, well, uh, several exciting things are happening. First of all, in the nursery during the nine o'clock hour, we will, are introducing a curriculum so that our kids can start learning those Old Testament stories and curriculum. Then we will have um, godly play, we'll have a middle school group, we will have high school meeting over at Lily Bean, and then we have several offerings for adults. 
So please find your place in Sunday school and join us there. Also, our back to school bash out here across on the square, August 28th, the Wednesday night. So we are gonna we're gonna double kick off this year. We're gonna have the um, the 5:15. Whoops, let me let me all of you all of you that um, wear hearing aids and they talk in your ear, I forgot to turn my phone down, so now you officially know I'm old. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I usually turn it down before church. Uh, so we're going to double kick off, okay? We're going to kick off on the 28th across the square, and that's really our outreach to kids' place families. Then we're going to kick off the next Wednesday night with our birthday celebration, and the next Wednesday night will be full-fledged with all of our music for children as well as our um, class. There's some exciting news coming about an adult class that we'll feature next week, so be sure you're here for that. Okay, two last things with QR codes, and you can be helping me think if I forgot something because uh, some of you know that we've just moved a, a, a kid to D.C., so I feel like I'm running a little bit uh, on empty today, and my knees are full-fledged, inflamed, but that's what happens when you get old and you try to move kids. But we have two QR codes that you can take advantage of. One, on here, uh, or on here, okay? You can uh, register your attendance. You can send a prayer request to the staff through both of these QR codes. You can use this piece of paper, fill it out, and put it in the offering plate. If you are visiting, we would love to have your information. If you have a prayer request you'd like to send to the staff, that would be great. Then we have a new QR code on the back that gives all the ways that you can be involved and serve here at Central. And so take advantage of those things. Now, is there anything I missed? Okay, lots of things happening here, getting ready to kick off in a big way. So let's stand together and share the peace of Christ. always so much fun to see y'all visiting and just sharing the peace and love of Christ. Please know that as we head into this fall, so many great things are happening here at Central. I feel like I especially ran through that Sunday school thing, but we would love for you to be connected with other folks here at Central. I get so tickled. Everybody says, oh, I, I can't come at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. And I'm like, well, how about Sunday night? And they're like, no, that's when we get ready for the week. Well, what about Monday night? No, that's soccer. Well, what about Tuesday night? No, that's gymnastics. Well, what about 
about Wednesday night? We go through the whole thing, and then I'm like, what about Sunday morning at 9 o'clock? And they're like, you know, that might be the best time. <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, we would love to have you connect with other folks here, not because we need to say we've got more people, because we've got fantastic people here at Central that love and care for one another, and you bring a special piece to the table. So come bring your piece to the table. Come share and love the people of God. There is a world out there that needs what we have. So let's let the fire burn bright here in Central, so bright that it burns out to our community. So we're so glad you're here. Thanks for being a part. Let's think about how firm a foundation that we build our lives on, on the love and the grace and the mercy of God that we're here to worship this morning. Welcome. Offering of praise, Libby. How firm a foundation with a touch of a jazz riff. Man, I just think that's an apt way to praise the ever-creating creator as we gather in worship this day. So I'm going to invite you now to add your voices to the worship that has already begun as we stand and sing together the solid rock. Would you please stand?
congregation, you may be seated. Good morning, congregation. Check. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Caroline, Director of Children's Ministries here, and just wanted to welcome you and welcome you if you're viewing online. But I do want to echo what Tammy was saying earlier about kicking off the school year. Our kids are back in school. Our college kids are going back soon or have moved back. And morning prayer this morning, I'd like to add you, add them to your prayer list to be praying for them as they go back and all the teachers. Um, also want to mention that the flowers here in the altar are for a special celebration of John and Gail Green's 52nd wedding anniversary. So that is... That is definitely a praise for that, uh, the wonderful many years that they've had together and many more. Also on our prayer concerns, you'll see them listed in your bulletin, and if you want to add any, uh, you can add through the QR code that Tammy was mentioning or um, tell any of our staff, and we'd be happy to add those. But take, take a minute to look at the uh, prayer concerns there, and then we will go to the Lord in prayer. Will you pray with me? Wonderful God, we turn to you today with people on our hearts and minds and people on our prayer concerns list that we'd like for you to be with and give extra ounce of blessing to, Lord. We have those in our community that are going back to school, We ask that you watch over them and be with our kids and our teachers and administrators as they, as they start the new year. We have praises, Lord, that we have on our heart, we bring to you, and we have those that are grieving in our community, Lord. And all these people and all here, Lord, we are on this inner journey what it means to be ourselves, what it means to be in Christ. There are some that maybe haven't quite started the inner journey, some that have heard about it and want to start, maybe need that nudge, Lord. And there are those who are on that inner journey that are right there with you, Lord, as you are with them. And as we have been hearing about the inner journey, Lord, we pray that you carry us into the outward journey, Lord. We know you are with, with us through it all, and with those all on our prayer list, Lord, and we praise you for that. Lord, you are the great giver of unconditional love and unconditional grace. We can't do anything more. We can't do anything less for you to love us more or less, Lord. You are unconditionally wonderful. And Lord, Christians around the world are coming together today, each and every day, to worship you, Lord. And we join with them in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory Well, now I invite our children forward for a children's message with Miss Julianne McDowell.
As I was reading the Bible scripture for today, this week, it made me think a lot about rest. And I think one of the um, things like that is really hard for me is thinking about rest. When you hear the word rest, what activities cause you to need rest? Swimming. Running. What else causes us to need to rest? Dorothy? Hopping. Yes, if you're hopping. Working. Maybe doing your homework at night. You need a rest after you do the homework. What are some ways we can rest? You can't get to bed. You can lay on the couch. Sleep. Could you, yeah, right, just be in the floor and relax. Also, sometimes rest could be things like getting some exercise, like if you went on a walk or you were like visiting with friends. Sometimes rest is being really quiet, but it's also doing things that makes your heart happy. For me, I often think of rest as really bad. I think of it as lazy, but that is not true. Both Jesus and his disciples took time to rest. After they would do their work, they would go and be in a quiet place. All of us need times where we can rest. When we're quiet, we can renew ourselves so that we're better at doing God's work. When we take time to rest, what could we do so that we are using the time to be with God? Yeah, read the Bible. Pray. I think some, like um, maybe even being out in nature or sitting quietly, sometimes God can talk to you. Being quiet is really hard for me. As this school year starts, let's work hard to do the work God has planned for us, but let's also make a plan to take time to rest because both doing God's work and resting will renew our focus so we can complete God's task. Let us pray. Dear God, please use me to glorify you. Also, please help me take time to rest so that I have renewed passions, energy, and focus. Amen. You guys have a good school week. This time in our service, it's our opportunity to give back to the Lord with our tithes and offerings. So I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward and receive those.
Let's pray. Gracious God, we come this morning with hearts just overflowing with gratitude of all the many things you've blessed us with. The beauty of our earth, the beauty of this church family, to be created by a loving and merciful God that has designed us with purpose and plans, given us meaning and fulfillment, giving us a chance to share all this with others. We are grateful, but we know that you've not given us all of this to keep it inside of these walls, but that you are sending us forth to share the same love, the same joy, the same peace that you have given to us. And so would you use these tithes and offerings? Would you bless them and multiply them? Would you give us wisdom on how to spend these monies so that others may know all that we know in knowing Jesus? So we thank you. We give you honor and praise. And we ask that you would use us as well as these tithes and offerings so that we would see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And we're praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Congregation, please may have a seat just for a moment. We're going to sing a new song. You guys can sit down too, that's fine. Yeah, it's no worries. <laughs> Thank you for being ready. We're going to sing a song that's, that's going to be new to us today. All my boast is in Jesus was written in collaboration with four different contemporary praise, uh, worship, praise and worship composers, and it's based on the writings of Paul. Okay? In his letter to the churches in Galatia, Paul writes, and I'm just quoting from the Bible here in the book of Galatians, may I never boast in anything except the cross of Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I believe these words are just still so relevant for us today as we find ourselves in a time that loves to post and then to boast about our lives on social media. And I am in no way insinuating that all social media is bad. Please don't hear that. Okay? But I think that we do live in that time. And so today we're going to offer this song as an opportunity, I guess is the way I'd like to put it, an opportunity to reset our hearts to boasting only in Jesus Christ. Now, the song lilts along, like kind of like an Irish folk tune, and I'd like to give you an opportunity to hear and then sing it, because I think this will be the first, well, I know this will be the first time we've sung it together as a congregation. So I want to take a minute and allow you to hear and give it a shot and try some things before we do. So could we stand together? As we get started, and we're going to just take a minute to isolate and pull in on the chorus. Um, and it's absolutely okay. I tell my musicians when I'm working, I like to move when I sing. And if you find yourself doing that same thing, it is okay. But the chorus goes like this. Good, thank you, Doug. Seeing the words there, it goes like so. All my boast is in Jesus. All my hope is his love, and I will glory forever in what the cross has done. Just that simple. And it's based on the words from Paul that I just shared with you a little bit together. Let's try together. Here we go. Ready? And let's sing. All my boast is in Jesus. All my hope is his love, and I will glory sing nothing else today but the chorus. That's absolutely fine. But I invite you to be brave and just go for it. Okay, the only scripture I can find in the Bible that talks about singing is says make a joyful noise. So if you're humming, playing, leaning, popping on the pew, however it works, that is just fine. Let's take it from the beginning, everybody. His merit, His righteousness, this sinner's only plea. For foolish pride be crucified, the work he 
Central United Methodist Church. My name is David Lee, and I'm one of the pastors here, and I want you to know that your presence here today is a blessing to us, and we hope that this time that we have together can be a blessing to you as well, as we come together to worship and pray and sing our songs and lift our concerns to God and hope to hear a word from Him that will guide us in our lives. And so, thank you for being here. It's great to see you. Um, before we get started in the message, I do want to make one, 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 one comment, which has to do with next week when we have Pastor Luke Edwards visiting, and he's really the guy that oversees fresh expressions, right? That's a new thing. Maybe you get an idea because of the words, but I just want to share a little bit about it, about why it was important or impactful for me and why I think it's important for us. So, here it is. I remember it was like years ago like over 10 years ago, I heard a message about kind of like a fresh expressions, but it was like a different way of doing church, right? If it ain't broke, why fix it? That was the thinking for a lot of people. But like 10, 12 years ago, I heard this message given about, and this was at the annual conference. This was a message about doing ministry in a different way, and I got a chance to visit uh, one of these different ministries, right? They were doing things differently, and I got to meet a pastor retired Presbyterian. He had worked 40 years uh, in his life as a, as a church pastor. And then after he retired, he decided he was going to do this different kind of ministry. And this specific ministry was they were going to move into 
like a very poor area, they were going to purchase a home, and out of that home, they were just going to invite people to have meals. If they had concerns, they would do Bible studies. They would, they would do whatever was needed to be a good neighbor, to love their neighbor. And I remember I asked them, so you worked for 40 years as a pastor, because I was a pastor. I, I'm still a pastor. So why would, you do this? why would you do this other thing? You've done your work, right? And this is what he said, and this is what stands out to me, which is he said, you know, as I was in ministry in the church, in the local church, and, you know, I tried my hardest, I did my best, but I knew deep down there were some people in that community that would never darken those doors to come in. And while I was in, while I was in church ministry, I just felt like I couldn't do anything about that about people that never felt like they can come into the church. And so after he retired, he said, I want to do something about that. And that's why he chose this other ministry to say, I want to minister, reach out to people that may not feel comfortable coming into a church. And I thought, and, I, and that's made an impact on my life too and on my ministry to say, that's not acceptable. It's not acceptable that we only do church in a way that makes insiders feel welcome and others people not feel welcome. And that's why I believe fresh expressions is so important because it's about people that may not feel comfortable, that may have baggage, that may have issues with local church or organized religion. And so this is a way of saying we want to share the message of Jesus Christ, his love, his grace and mercy for everybody. And that's why I believe a vital church can, can't only be about us. It's got to be how we share that same message of love with those around us, for those that may not feel comfortable to darken these doors and to be here. And so that's why. Uh, I do want to encourage you to come out, to listen to Luke, his story. Um, and I would love to see some fresh expressions just pop up in our church, in this community, um, so that the church will not only be here on Sunday morning, but will be out there. That the church will truly go forth to be as light, to be as salt for God in this world. So that's my little promo. Hopefully you guys will be here. Um, okay, so for today's message, let me begin with this. Do any of y'all have busy lives? You know, people talk about 40-hour work weeks, but you're like, what's that, part-time? Uh, and I feel like we do that, right, when it comes to work uh, and being busy, we do that. We wear it as like a badge of honor, right, to say, oh, look how many hours I put in. Look how much I got done. Look at all the good I am doing. But sometimes, let me ask you, aren't you just tired? just plum tired, just wore out, exhausted, with just nothing left to give, nothing left over. I mean, we, we're the kind of people today where we go on vacation and then come back needing another vacation to recover from the first vacation, right? How many times have you said that, coming back from a vacation? I've said it after every vacation <laughs> lately. Um, <laughs> and let me tell you people, that's no way to live. That's no way to live. And so maybe for you, you're, you're thinking, ugh, it's been a long day, it's been a long week. It's been a long year. Let me get some rest. You know, I need, I need some support. I need, I, I, need some, I need some help for myself. And so you think, you know what? I'll go to church this week. Right? I'll go to church. Maybe that will help. And I love, I love that so many of us, so many of you, are so faithful in coming to worship together each Sunday. I want to encourage you to do that. It's a good thing, right? It's a good thing. I love it. Thank you. I love a full church. I love a full choir. I love a full house. But when you come to church, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes, what you hear is, hey, folks, we need your help, right? We need your support. We need a volunteer here. We need a servant here. We need you to help us. And, 
And I'm thinking, I wonder if some of you are just like, what? Is this what I gave up my Sunday morning for? <laughs> Is this what I gave up my Sunday morning for? It's okay, I'm not going to ask you to verify that out loud. <laughs> and hear me out on this, okay? I'm going to say it again. People, that's no way to live. That's no way to live. And I do not believe that that is what God desires for your life either. Just endlessly just pouring out, giving out again and again and again without ever filling back up, without ever replenishing your own soul. And if we pay attention to Jesus in the Gospels, to his life, his ministry with his disciples, we begin to see a pattern that emerges. There's a rhythm of life and faith and ministry that all work together that Jesus demonstrates for us if we're paying attention to what Jesus does in his life and his ministry and his, and his work with his disciples. And I'm telling you, it is in that rhythm, this pattern that Jesus seems to be living his life and discipling other disciples that we will find rest for our souls, that we will find harmony and balance with life, faith, and work, that we can actually be replenished, where we can say with the psalmist, my cup also runneth over, and because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I will lack for nothing. I believe this is the kind of life God desires for us, for you. And so today, we're finishing up, this is part two, about sustaining the souls of the servants of God. And today, we're going to focus on the outward journey, outward journey. And before we go any further to the scripture reading, I do want to say again, uh, much of what I'll be sharing with you comes out of my own learning with a woman named Wendy Miller uh, in learning about spiritual direction. And so... This is her wisdom that I'd like to share with you that has made an impact on my life. So today, we're going to go to the outward journey, uh, Mark chapter 3, and we're going to read Mark chapter 6. So if you have your Bibles, follow along. If not, I think the screen will have it. Yes. The Gospel of Mark chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. And he, Jesus, appointed twelve to be with him and to be sent out to preach and to have authority to cast out demons. Now to Mark chapter 6, verse 30 to 32. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. This is the word of God for us, people of God. Thanks be to God. So let me recap a little bit the inward journey that we talked about last week and then move into the outward journey. Okay, so last week, recap, um, we learned that in Mark chapter 3, verse 13, that Jesus went up the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted. So Jesus invites us out of our lives, out of our usual routines and patterns, and calls us to himself, away on a mountain, signifying this is a place apart where we can be in solitude, away from the usual distractions, the preoccupations that seem to muffle the voice of God in our lives. And when we are able to hear this call in our lives and respond to come and to be with Jesus, we learn finally, to stop, to just stop, 
to turn aside from our every day and to be with Jesus, to be present, to be mindful. And this is where we are able to receive from God guidance for him to companion us and to form our life for work, ministry. We also found that Jesus, following in the custom, in the Hebrew custom of name giving, uh, this is what he does with his disciples. To Simon, he gave the name Peter. And to the brothers Zebedee, John, and James, he gave the names Boanerges, meaning sons of thunder. And so this is the way that Jesus ministers and works in the lives of his disciples, right? Jesus draws our attention to what is within you by giving you a name so that we can really know, so that we can know who we really are or what we truly need to face in our lives, right? In case of James and John, he called them sons of thunder. Why? Because that was what they needed to face, their anger. And in this way, Jesus takes time in being with you to instruct you to shape you and to form you to become the person he desires for you to be. Being with Jesus, we arrive now at our outward journey. The church cannot be your world. This cannot be everything that you are. Rather, John Wesley, Right, the founder of Methodist Church, the Methodist movement, said, no, in fact, the world is my parish, or the world is my church. There is work to do. We are not to simply come and fellowship and enjoy one another. There is purpose. There is, there is movement outward to do his will. And so in Mark chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, we see Jesus naming gifts and giving direction for this outward journey of our life's work and ministry. So if we look at Mark chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, it says this, And he appointed twelve to be with him and to be sent out to preach and to have authority to cast out demons. On our outward journey, our work is to include communicating the gospel communicating the gospel, however that looks, whatever form it takes, being empowered to confront evil, to see, to see sins and inequalities and injustice in the world and to be able to confront it, to be able to name it, all the while being a presence for healing in the world. This description, right, is Jesus' own description of his ministry. This is what he, he lives out and calls us to. And so this is what we see Jesus saying that this is what he's about in Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captains, recovery of sight to the blind, to, to set free those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is the stuff that our outward journey must be occupied with. How are you communicating the gospel in such a way that it is good news for the poor? Not just the poor in spirit, the actual poor. How does, our, how does the gospel, the message of Jesus, speak to the actual poor so that it actually becomes good news? How are we confronting the evils and the injustices in our lives, in, in the world around us? Are we able to confront that? How are we a presence for healing in those myths so that we can bring about release, we can bring about recovery, we can set free, so that we can indeed proclaim the year of the Lord's favor? You see, this is the work of the disciples. You see, coming to church, 
paying your offering, going to Sunday school. Great, wonderful. But those things are in place so that you could do this, this outward journey of proclaiming the good news, of confronting the evils that we see, and being a healing presence for all those around us. And so being with Jesus, being formed by Jesus, we are sent out to carry out this mission. You see, you guys are ambassadors for Christ. You are like little love letters that God is sending out to share his message with the world. See, as Christians, you bear the name of Christ. And so as you are sent out, right, that's what the benediction is. It's a sending forth to go back into the world, right? And we are sending you back as little Christ in the world so that you can be his light in the world. You see how all that works? This is the outward journey. This is what we are to be occupied with in terms of the life that, that Jesus is calling us to live. So we have the coming to and being with. We have the sending out to go forth, to be. But this is not where it ends. And this is the part that I think the church often forgets or neglects, but is vital. I will say this. This is the secret sauce to all of this working. Here it is. The pattern doesn't just end with coming, being with, and being sent out. No, the rhythm of our lives continues. And we see this in the gospel narratives. Following times of active engagement in ministry, Jesus arranges for his disciples times of private conversation and retreat for rest. A time where you can report in. A time for prayer and spiritual guidance. These are the times of return and renewal for the disciples. There is a coming and being with, sending out, and now what I want you to see is there is a return, a call to return again to be with. And this is what we saw in Mark chapter 6. And so I want to read that again if we have it up there. Mark chapter 6. The apostles gathered around. You can keep that up. That's fine. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away into a boat, in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. You see, this is the key to the sustaining of your souls. When you feel tired and worn out and just not good for anything, that is when you need to be hearing Jesus' call to return. You've been out too long, right? you got to come back. You got to replenish. You got to rest. You got to renew. This is Jesus' invitation to come back. Come away with me to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. How long has it been since you've heard this invitation in your life to return, to spend time, to be with Jesus again, away? from the distractions, from the work, important work, things that have to be done, the comings and goings of the world and your busy life. Jesus is saying, come, return. Let's put aside the work for a time, the ministry for a time. It's okay. It's okay. The church will not come fall, crumbling down, right? so that you can be with Jesus again all by yourselves, so that you can rest, so that you can find renewal in your soul. I love verse 30. I don't know if we have this up there. I love verse 30 in this, in this because it reveals, it reveals um, how we can be sometimes, oftentimes, right? Where it says, the apostles gather around Jesus, Right? They've come back and told them all that they had done and taught. Look, Jesus, look at, look at all I've done, right? For you, for the church. Aren't you proud of me? Right? Hey, I don't, I don't just go to church. I go to Sunday school. Well, Sonny, I teach that Sunday school. 
or I'm the lay leader, or I'm the church council. Do you know how much I give? Do you know how much I do for this church? And we want the flowers. We want to be recognized. And I just wonder if Jesus looks at us and thinks, you know, that's all and good, but I want you for myself. I want you for myself. As a loving parent looks at a child, right? Yes, amazing, you did great. But now I want you to take some time for yourself. Let me love on you, let me care for you. Let me give you some rest. And you see, not you see, and when I think about this, I think, you know, we have many saints in our church, many saints who give and give, going beyond the call of duty, week nights, weekends, you know, I love your heart for service, I love your heart for Jesus. Now, can you also have a heart for yourself, to take care of yourself? Will you allow Jesus to tend to you for a while? Just to rest for a while. Not forever, right? Not forever, but for a while. For you have been busy with the coming and going and have not had time for leisure, even to eat. And Jesus is saying to you, that's no way to live. People, that's no way to live. That's no way to live. Jesus calls us into a different rhythm for our lives to come, to be with, to be named, to be sent out, to return again, to be with Jesus. Where are you? Where are you in this walk? Where are you in this rhythm? Where do you hear Jesus' call on your life? Lately, I've been hearing the voice of Jesus, the call of Jesus, through my son, <laughs> Lincoln. He's here, right? He's still here. Uh, I've been hearing the voice of Jesus through my son <laughs> when he says to me, Dad, put your phone down. This is like literally what he says. Like, Dad, put your phone down. I want you to be with me. Dad, put your phone down. I want you to be with me. And most of the time I say, okay, son, <laughs> I'm going to put my phone down. I will be with you. And let me tell you something. I mean, if this is the son's heart for the father, I want you to imagine the father's heart for his children and for you. Jesus loves you. God loves you. All of you. Not just what you can do for him. God wants you to be made whole. And when you're tired, he wants you to rest. When you're busy, he wants you to take a break. And he says, it's okay. It's okay. Because after six days of creation, what did God do? He took a day of rest. And he says, if I need the rest, how much more do you? And so... I want you this week to think about this rhythm that Jesus has kind of provided for us, a rhythm of life. Where are you in that life? Where are you in that rhythm? Where do you hear Jesus' voice calling you? That is your work this week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. I come here often to be reminded, well, truthfully, I come here because I get paid, yes, right, I'm <laughs> here, <right? laughs> but for me, in this time, in this place, um, I just try to be open to what, as David has said, what Jesus might be saying, and I don't know about for you, but for me, man, I like to wear my busy as a badge of honor right here, you know, look at all the good work I'm doing, I find myself in that chapter, thir or verse 30, um, yeah. And so it's good to kind of recalibrate that and move away from that kind of boast, um, even though often it's good stuff. And David, I really also like the secret sauce, looking for balance in our lives. And so this last hymn that we're going to offer this morning um, is an opportunity to think about that, okay, what that might look like in our lives. 
And so I encourage you to be doing that as we sing together. Come and find the quiet center. Let's stand together as we sing. the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>